Yes, I remember the wave. It was one of the most frightening classroom experiences I ever had. It all started when we were studying Nazi Germany. The people selected for extermination by the Nazis were herded into concentration camps located all over Eastern Europe. The life expectancy of prisoners in the camps was only 270 days. They were worked, starved, tortured. And when they couldn't work anymore, they were exterminated in gas chambers. And their remains were disposed of in ovens. In all, the Nazis exterminated over 10 million men, women, and children in these concentration camps. What you just saw took place in Germany between 1934 and 1945. The situation grew out of the aftermath of World War I. Now, Germany had been defeated. Leadership was at a low ebb. Inflation was high. And thousands were homeless hungry, jobless, and Hitler took advantage of the situation to establish himself and his Third Reich. We all know the rest, the camps, the killings. What resulted was the most efficient death machinery ever devised. Robert, please excuse us if we're boring you. <laughs> Amy. Were all Germans Nazis? No. As a matter of fact, less than 10% of the German population belonged to the Nazi party. Then how come nobody tried to stop them? They said they didn't know what was happening. Eric, how could you kill 10 million people without somebody noticing? Yeah, that can't be true. Well, after the war, the Germans claimed they knew nothing of the concentration camps or the killing. Lori? Eric's right. How could the Germans sit back while the Nazis slaughtered people all around them and say that they didn't know anything about it? How could they do that? How could they say that? That was a very good question, Laurie. film really got to you, huh? Yeah, it upset me. Doesn't it make you angry? Lori, it was a long time ago. We can't change what happened. I know. It still upsets me, though. Hi, guys. Is it okay if we park, or is this table for leather zone? Not if we're sitting here. That's for sure. Oh. <laughs> Have a seat. Hey, Davey. We're gonna win the big game on Friday, huh? We better. Coach's been working our tails off. We'll kill him. Would you forget about football? How about going to a dance? My church is having one tonight. Sounds great, Amy, but uh, David and I have to study. You know, if you two don't stop acting like hermits, you're gonna end up like Robert over there. you at the faculty meeting? What time is it? Oh, it's okay. I covered for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what are you reading that's uh, so fascinating here? Huh? Some terrific stuff here. Look. Rise and fall of the Third Reich? Hitler? <laughs> what, are you cramming for a degree in dictatorship? Yeah, well, one of my students asked me a question I couldn't answer today. Oh, welcome to the club. Mm, all right.
going to talk to you about discipline. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, now hear me out. Now, this can be exciting. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Now, I'm talking to you about power. Power through discipline. Success? Success through discipline. Nobody here wants a taste of power and success? Okay. Here we go. David. Eric. You play football? You know it takes discipline to win. What about ballet dancers? Andrea? You know it takes long, hard hours of work for them to develop their skill. Same goes with painters working at their craft, and scientists. It is all discipline, control, <laughs> the strength of the will. Well, there's something we can do to experience power through discipline right now. Shall we try? It begins with posture. Amy, come forward, please. <laughs> Teacher, <in fact. laughs> the proper seating posture will help the concentration, strengthen the will. Boy, this is stupid. <laughs> First, put your feet flat on the floor. Just get scared. I come to pee by mistake. <laughs> now, place your hands flat across the small of your back and force your spine straight up. Can't you breathe more easily? Relax. Now resume the proper position. Relax. Again. Everybody look how Robert's legs are parallel. His ankles locked. His knees bent at 90 degrees. See how straight his spine is. Chin back, head forward. Very good, Robert. Now, I want you all to get up and walk about the room. And when I give the command, I want you to return to your seats as quickly as possible and assume the proper seating posture. Come on. Try it again. Now, the quieter and more controlled you are, the quicker you'll be able to reach your seats properly. Excellent. Now, there are three more rules which you must obey. One, everybody must have pencils and note paper for note taking. Two, when asking or answering a question, you must stand at the side of your seats. And three, the first words when answering or asking a question are Mr. Ross. All right? Brad, who was the British Prime Minister before Winston Churchill? Um, wasn't it the... You weren't listening. Remember? Discipline. Robert, show Brad the proper procedure for asking a question. Mr. Ross. That's correct. Thank you, Robert. Again, Brad? Mr. Ross, wasn't it the um, Prime Minister? No, too slow. Watch too slow. From now on, your answers are to be as short as possible. Now sit down and try it again. Mr. Ross, Chamberlain. 
Now that's the way to answer a question. Punctual, precise. What country did Hitler invade in September of 1939? Andrea. Mr. Ross, I don't know. Still a good response, Andrea. Amy. Mr. Ross, Poland. Excellent. What was the name of Hitler's political party? Mr. Ross, the Nazis. Good, Brian. Very quick. That was the short name. What was the official name? Laurie. The National Socialist. Sit down and do it again. Mr. Ross, the National Socialist German Workers' Party. Correct. Peter, who proposed the Lend-Lease Act? Mr. Ross, Roosevelt. Right. Who died in the death camps? Mr. Ross, Jews, gypsies, and homosexuals. Who ran the death camps? Mr. Ross, the SS. Excellent. Tomorrow's assignment is on the board. Class dismissed. Man, what a rush, huh? Too bad all my classes aren't like that. Sure beats taking notes. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, anybody can get this class to get it together like that is a genius. Did you ever really? see anything like that? I was really getting into it. <laughs> well, leave it well, lunch. how quickly they accepted that new behavior code. I mean, everyone did it immediately. It was eerie. Honey, they reacted that way because they were playing a game. I don't think so. Well, how else would you explain it? I don't know. It's as if they wanted to be disciplined. So, are you going on with it tomorrow? No, I don't think so. I've got the whole Japanese campaign tomorrow. people who work and struggle together. It's building a barn with your neighbors. <laughs> it's feeling that you're a part of something that's more important than yourself. A movement, a team, a cause. And like discipline, to fully understand community you have to experience it and participate in it. Now, everyone, repeat our two mottos. Strength through discipline, strength through community. Now, we need a symbol for our new community. Something for members of this class only. A wave is a pattern of change. It has movement, direction, and impact. And from now on, we will be known as the wave. And this will be our salute. Robert, what is our motto? Mr. Ross, strength through discipline, strength through community. Very good, Robert. Remain standing, please. Now, Peter, Amy, 
Eric. Strength through discipline, strength through community. Now, Brian. Andrea? Laurie. Join them and repeat. Strength through discipline, strength through community. Louder. Strength through discipline, strength through community. Strength through discipline, strength through community. Strength through discipline. Everybody was saluting and repeating the motto. You couldn't help but get caught up in it. Ooh. Your paper. <laughs> you know, really wanting to make it work. But I don't like it, Laurie. It, it sounds too much like brainwashing and mob psychology to me. No, Mom, it's nothing like that. Honest, you just have to be there to, to feel the positive energy in class to really get what's going on. I am for whatever will make kids pay attention to anything these days. And that's really what it's doing. Even Robert Watkins, you know, the class creep. Mm. He's even a part of the group now. But you're supposed to be learning history, not how to be part of a group. This country was built by people who were part of a group. Uh, the pilgrims, founding fathers. Yes, but it owes its greatness to those people who weren't afraid to be individuals. Stop worrying, Mom. Mr. Ross has just found a really great way to get everybody to learn something. Even the slow kids are keeping up. All right. Now that's, that's all very well and good for the slow kids. But it just doesn't sound like the right thing for you, Laurie. Sweetheart, we have raised you to be an individual. Madge, don't you think you're taking all this a little too seriously? There's a bit of community spirit. It's terrific for those kids. That's right, Mom. Haven't you always said I was a little bit too independent? But honey, just remember that the popular thing is not always the right thing. Mom, you don't understand. I am sure that Laurie's history teacher knows exactly what he's doing. Besides, as long as the other parents aren't raising any objection, why should we make a fuss? Because it is dangerous to allow a teacher to manipulate students like that. We've always taught Laurie to think for herself. And a few days experiment by a history teacher isn't going to change that. Mom, Mr. Ross is one of my best teachers. He knows what he's doing. Where's David tonight? Isn't he coming over? No, he's at home studying for tomorrow's history assignment. David? Studying? Now there's something to worry about. <laughs> How's that class experiment going, Dr. Frankenstein? Have they turned on you yet? Now, quite the contrary. Most of them are actually turning into human beings. You don't say. And you wouldn't believe the homework assignments. They do what I give them and then they do more. They're asking all kinds of questions. These can't be some of the same kids I have for music. It's amazing how much more they like you when you make decisions for them. How far can you push this? I don't know, but I intend to find out. Why don't you sit down, Eric? Fu Young's going to get cold. You know, the funny thing is, I feel myself getting caught up in it. It's contagious. Becoming a guinea pig in your own experiment, huh? What do you care what your mom says? I didn't say I agreed with her. No, you didn't say you disagreed with her either. Listen, I was just telling you what she said. How does she know? She can't possibly understand what the wave's about unless she's been here to see it work. Parents always think they know everything. Hey! Who is that? I don't know. He's not in our history class. You all have membership cards. If you turn them over, you will find that some of them have been marked with a red X. You got a red X, you are to be monitors and will report directly to me any members who don't obey our rules. Discipline and community are meaningless without action. Now, discipline gives you the right to action. A disciplined group with a goal can take action like a well-oiled machine. Now, through hard work and allegiance to each other, you will learn faster and accomplish more. But only if you support one another and only if you work together and obey the rules can you ensure the success of the way.
Now, you are all to actively recruit new members. Each new member must demonstrate knowledge of our rules and pledge strict obedience to them. Mr. Ross, for the first time I feel like I'm part of something great. Mr. Ross, this is like being born again. Mr. Ross, I feel the same way. Mr. Ross, I'm proud of the wave. This is a very important meeting. All the new members are going to be there. So what? David, don't you think you're taking this whole thing a little bit too seriously? No, I'm not. You're not taking it seriously enough. Look, Laura, you've always been a leader. The other kids, they've always looked up to you. You've got to be at that meeting. That's exactly why I'm not going. Let them make up their own minds about the wave. They're individuals. I don't understand. <laughs> I can't believe how crazy everybody's gotten. David, the wave is taking over everything. Sure, because the wave makes sense, Laurie. It works. Everybody's on the same team. Everybody's equal. Oh, that's terrific. Do we all score a touchdown? You know, you're just against this thing because you're not special anymore. Because you're not the best student in the class now. That's not true, and you know it. I think it is true. Now you know how the rest of us felt listening to you and Amy always giving the right answers. David, you're being stupid. All right. If I'm so stupid. Why don't you go find yourself a smart boyfriend? First time in my life, I feel. Well, nobody makes jokes about me anymore. I'm part of something special. I just don't want anything to ever happen to you. Mr. Ross, please let me be your bodyguard. the school paper. I mean, you can't say these things about the wave. Well, why not? They're true. Amy, the wave has become an obsession with everyone. No one's thinking for themselves anymore. Come on, you're just upset. You're letting your argument with David get to you. But the wave is hurting people. Everyone's going along with it like a flock of sheep. Lori, please don't submit this. I already have. I know what I have to do. I gotta go. Mr. 
Ross, can I follow you home? Oh, thank you, Robert. That won't be necessary. You have homework. I need to talk to you for a moment. Can't it wait? I gotta finish this before class tomorrow. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. This wave thing. It's just becoming too disruptive. You've got to put an end to it. Half of my class has been skipping just to go to yours. I, I mean, you've disrupted the entire school. And it isn't just me. All the teachers are complaining. Well, they just don't know what I'm trying to do. Did you know that the school counselors have been questioning every student in your class? I mean, even the principal's concerned about this now. Well, don't you think I know that? I know they're saying about me that I'm crazy with power, that I'm on an ego trip. Have you thought they may be right? I mean, think of your original goals here. Are they the same ones you have now? I thought you were on my side. I am on your side, but I have seen you these last few days, and, and I don't even know you. You have become so involved in playing this role at school that you started slipping into it at home. Honey, just turn it off. Not yet. When? After you or some of these kids do something you'll all regret? Well, I can't stop now. They'd be left hanging. They'd be confused. They wouldn't have learned a thing. Well, let them be confused. No, I can't do that. Now, I'm a teacher. I have responsibilities to them. I have to push them until they get the point. Well, I'm teaching these kids the most important lesson of their lives. Well, I hope the principal agrees with you because he just called and he wants to see you right after class tomorrow. These are all lies. She can't be allowed to say these things. It's not important. No nobody cares what Lori's writing or what she has to say. But anybody who reads this will get the wrong idea about the weight. And this is the second article she's written. Relax. There's always going to be people who won't believe in what we're trying to do. But if we don't watch out, those people are going to ruin it for the rest of us. Lori Saunders is a threat. She must be stopped. Don't worry. David and I will take care of it. She comes. Well, let me take care of this, okay? Okay. As long as she understands how important this is. We're not playing around with games anymore, you know? Hey, Lori, can you wait up? I gotta talk to you. It's real important. It's okay. Nobody else is coming. Well, I'm not used to seeing you by yourself anymore. Where are your troops? Look, Lori, will you just listen to me for a minute, please? David, we said everything that we had to say to each other the other day. Now, I don't want to rehash it, so just leave me alone. Lori, you got to stop writing that stuff against the wave. You're causing all kinds of problems. The wave is causing the problems, David. It is not. Look, Lori, we want you with us, not against us. Well, count me out. I told you I quit. This is not a game anymore. People are beginning to get hurt. All right, so a few people are getting hurt along the way. But it's for the good of the whole. Why can't you see that? Look, it's a new system. We can make it work. Not with me, you can't. Let go of me. Look, Lori, you've got to stop. David, let go of my arm! Lori, stop writing those articles and keep your mouth shut about the wave. I will write and I will say anything that I want to and you can't stop me! We can and we will. 
I hate you. I hate the way I hate all of you. Shut up. We know how important this is to you. It is to all of us. But it's just gone too far. It's taken over, Mr. Ross. There's no room to be yourself or say what you really believe. And all the kids in school are scared. They're really scared. Not only to say anything against the wave, but what might happen to them if they don't go along with it. Kids are actually spying on each other. Some of them are even using the wave as an excuse to beat up on other kids. Yes, the principal told me about that this afternoon. Well, it's true. You can't even carry on a conversation without worrying about who's listening to you. We're really scared, Mr. Ross. Lori and I haven't talked for days because of the wave. And tonight, I lost control and almost hurt her. You've got to stop this nightmare. You're right. And I will. What are you going to do, Mr. Ross? Well, I'll take care of it tomorrow. I have to do it my way. Mr. Ross, can I show you something? Yes, Robert, what is it? Mr. Ross, what does it mean? It's a secret code, isn't it? The wave is upon us. Robert? You're right. Class, there's something very important I have to tell you about the wave. At five o'clock, there will be a rally in the auditorium for wave members only. Now, the wave is not just a classroom experiment. No, it's much more than that. Across the country, Teachers like myself have been recruiting and training a youth brigade to show the rest of the nation how to achieve a better society through discipline, community, action, and pride. Now look what we've accomplished in two short weeks in this school alone. If we could change things here, we can change things everywhere. In factories, in stores, in universities, in all the institutions. Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross. Sit down, David. But Mr. Ross, you say, David, please, I said, sit down. Now listen carefully. During the rally, a prominent political figure will reveal himself to all of you as our national leader. He will appear on television and he will announce the formation of a nationwide WAVE youth program. Wait, wait, wait! Don't listen to him! Don't listen! 
and show him he's lying. Can't you see what he's doing? Can't any of you think for yourselves anymore? Robert, Eric, Brian, please escort these two out of the room and see that they stay out. Amy, please listen to me. They're lying. Don't listen to him. He's lying. Now, I want every single member of the wave to attend the rally. Each member of this class is personally responsible for a record turnout. Everybody wear blue shirts. Bring yeah. banners and signs. Yeah. Mr. Ross, we can do it. Good. And make sure that no one but loyal WAVE members are allowed in. Mr. Ross, yes! I really couldn't believe it when my mother told me that Mr. Ross called the house. He wants to talk to us. I know. He tried to reach me, too, but I've had about all the talking I can take from him. David, is it possible that I was wrong? No. No, Lori, you were right. We were both right. Then why doesn't anybody else see it? I don't know. Like they're all in a trance or something. Just won't listen anymore. But they've got to listen. David, we've got to make them listen. I know. And the only thing I can think of is to try to speak at that rally. It's worth a try. Come on. Yes. Turn on the television set.
National Youth Movement. You thought you were so special. Better than everyone outside this room. You traded your freedom for the luxury of feeling superior. You accepted the group's will over your own conviction, no matter who you hurt. Oh, you thought you were just going along for the ride, that you could walk away at any moment. But where were you heading? How far would you have gone? Take a look at your future. good Nazis. You would have put on the uniforms, turned your heads, and allowed your friends and neighbors to be persecuted and destroyed. Fascism isn't something those other people did. It's right here in all of us. You ask, how could the German people do nothing as millions of innocent human beings were murdered? How could they claim they weren't involved? What causes people to deny their own history? Well, if history repeats itself, you'll all want to deny what has happened to you in the wave. But if our experiment is successful, we'll have learned that we are all responsible for our own actions. And that you must question what you do rather than blindly follow a leader and that for the rest of your lives, you will never allow a group's will to usurp your individual rights. Now, I know this has been painful for you. It certainly has for me. But it's a lesson we'll all share for the rest of our lives.